All right, let's talk about um, racism in sports. I mean, this has been a prevalent issue throughout the world of sports, and in particular, racism towards African Americans, which has especially been bad over the course of the history of sports around the world, from coaching to commentary to grassroots to stadiums, mirrors the inequalities in society. And I, I believe that only structural upheaval across its governing bodies will help achieve a lasting change. But what do you think should be the best way to punish racism acts in, in sports? Well, I mean, as, as I've said in a lot of commentaries that I have given over the last uh, few months, racism in sport is a reflection of racism in the society. Oh. You cannot expect a child to grow up in, in a house where there is abject hatred for the black race. He grows up, he goes to work, he hates black people when he's at work, he hates black people when he's in school, and then all of a sudden he goes to the football field and decides to be lovey-dovey with a black player. It's impossible. So it is a reflection of the wider society. It is a reflection of what is going on in our society over here in, in, in the Western world, I should say. But how do we punish it? Uh, we can set deterrence. We can set deterrence, but in the same way as you know that you cannot punish, you cannot use punishment of crime mm. to deter somebody from committing that crime. If somebody wants to actually steal money, embezzle, or, or rape, or whatever, commit a crime, he looks at the stats, he looks at the people who have been sent to jail, and he doesn't put him off wanting to do it. He still wants to do it. And that's exactly the same thing with the racist person. Yeah. He knows what the punishment, the implications will be, but he's still going to do it anyway. So I think that the, the first thing I say, and I've said it to FIFA, I've said it at FIFA and CAF level, the very first thing is if we deprive the people of watching games by punishing the club, by saying, okay, this game is done, immediately we decide, we detect racist behavior, we mm. cut the game, we stop it. Mm. We stop that game, and award the, the points and the goals to the opposing team, mm. then people in the crowd will fish out the people who are actually being racist because they don't want to be deprived of what they paid good money to come and watch. You know, and therefore that could be one deterrent, but that is still a deterrent, still doesn't stop it. Because I'll tell you something, one, one thing that happens in a racist mind is that he doesn't feel it until that moment comes and it just it just comes out whatever the expletive just comes out it's not like if he's pre-planned it that you know what this is what i'm going to do when i get to the stadium today yes. i'm going to look at ngolo kante and call him something no what's going to happen really what happens is he is enjoying his game he's got his glass of beer in his hand and all of a sudden somebody does something and it triggers it so you can't even control it because it's impossible the important thing now that I see is that if we punish broadly the club or the country where this racist act comes from, they will have the nerve to go and educate their people. But yeah. also, we need to provide a very good support network for racist, racism victims because we don't do enough of that. Very true. You know, there are times as well that the referees do not use their discretion to to settle these issues on the football pitch. Say, for example, there was a time it happened to Balotelli when he was on the touchline and he had to kick the ball into the stands. Then he got, there was a time he even got a red card. So don't you think the referees as well should be educated on how to manage the emotions of these players who have been racially abused? Well, I mean, referees are human beings as well and they are caught in a web of uncertainty. Because there's no clarity in what's going on in race, in the policies of racism. We don't, it, FIFA set up um, some years ago a FIFA anti uh, discriminatory anti racism yeah. group committee and dissolved it about four years ago when they said that their job was done. So there's no clear guidelines at the moment as to what needs to be done. So the referees are human beings, they don't know when they're going to cross that line what line there is to cross, where do we go from here? If I say that I end the game, if I give this guy a red card, or if I don't, I'm going to be seen to be condoning his behavior of kicking the ball into the crowd. Mm. But I tell you something that happened, and it didn't happen to racism. It happened uh, only a two, a two days ago in America, where Landon Donovan, the head coach of uh, 
one of the American clubs, he actually, because a player abused, uh, homophobic abuse against an openly gay player, he okay. took his players off the pitch. They were leading 3-1 at the time and he forfeited the game. Wow. He was happy to do it. He took the players off the pitch and the game concluded there and then. Now, they were leading 3-1. It was going to cost them their place in the, uh, in the playoffs, yeah. but he didn't mind. He took his players. He told them, guys, are you happy to do this? They said, yeah. He took them off the pitch. Wow. Now, imagine if there was a crowd, because we're still playing without spectators at the moment. Mm -hmm. Imagine if there was a crowd of 20,000, 30,000 people in the stands. They have paid good money to come and watch that game. Mm. 30 minutes into the game, a player commits this kind of atrocity. And all of a sudden, his man the manager of the opposing team says, guys, let's go. Mm. If, if that happened a few times, they will not be happy. The crowd will not be happy. And they will talk to each other a little bit more and say, well, we can't be losing money this way. We'll either not come to the stadium and watch the games, or we're going to have to sort this thing out. Wow. Wow. It's, it's a tough one right there. And it, it just feels like it's an unending crisis. But I just hope that someday, sometime soon, we will put a stop to racism in football, in our society in general. It's a, it's a tough one. It's a really tough one because it's in the mindset of the people. These are people who have grown up many, many years, one way or the other, having something or the other against against the black race. Mm. Um, you know, I've worked with people who had some tendencies before. They met me, they decided that, okay, maybe the black people are not as bad as we thought they were. Mm. But then it's not everybody that has an opportunity to get close to a black man. So they've got their mindset, they've got what's going on in their minds. And therefore, it's very, very hard to change. The only thing I need us to do is to provide that support, the yeah. same support that people people who get that racist um, abuse, they feel very hurt. <clears throat> they feel very, very bad about it. it. It hurts them. And it's only when it happens to them that we now rush up to come and support them and say, oh, sorry, guys. We need to prepare our minds for the fact that it's there. It's not going away. And how do we deal with it? We deal with it with comportment, with mental, with maturity, with a good mentality, and then we'll be all right. Mm. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Tunde Adelakun, head scout of the Super Eagles of Nigeria. Thank you so much. All right. Please continue to stay safe out there, and of course, enjoy the rest of your day. Many thanks. Thanks to you and you too. All right. I mean, uh, the issue of racism seems to be unending. It has happened to the likes of MNK, Gyan. There's also um, Martins, Eto, Balotelli, Kulibali. Lots of African players have complained about these things. And it seems like the proper discipline has not been put for the offending people. The worst part is that the governing body of football FIFA I believe they are not giving stringent measures enough. Mm. I take a look at UEFA, you know, during the UEFA Nations League, uh, they gave like three stages in which the referee should follow when it comes to racism chance. Mm. It happened to one of the English players, and then, fine, they didn't get up to the stage three whereby everyone needs to leave the field. Mm. However, why does that need to happen in an international game? Yeah. The worst part about, about this is the fact that I believe some players have now come to terms with it. They say, oh, it's normal. I hear it all the time. You took a look at some of those clips. You saw Danny Alves just picking up the banana, banana and yeah. just putting it down. He's like, yo, I'm, I'm used to it. So that is the most, that's, that's just the worst part about it. The fact mm. that some people just believe that, you know what, for the rest of my life, have to live with it. I will continue to live with that. So that is wrong. It's not right. And I love what Mr. Adelakun said. He said, racism would not be in sports except it is in the society. Mm -hmm. So from the society, it stems into other parts of life. Mm -hmm. So if you cannot eradicate it from the society, first of all, you can't take it out of sports. Mm -hmm. The worst part is that sports is meant to be a medium in which anyone from anywhere, irrespective of your background, your religion, your gender, yeah. it's meant to cause unity. True. And then sometimes we have, I mean, grievous disloyalty, grievous mm -hmm. disunity, which is so wrong. <sighs> How can we eradicate this? Look, it's, it needs to be a collective decision. Mm -hmm. And I think something else that might be wrong is the fact that there are some people in the high-end positions who actually have this mentality. So if the administrators who are meant to be helping to put measures in place to stop this, if they have that same mentality, how then do we want to curb this thing? Mm -hmm. So there needs to be a total system flush, right. starting from the society up onto the administrators. Well, it's a sad case, but we'll keep fighting.